All right, so today we're going to be looking at the process of painting bone, how to get the texture and the color down. Now there's a lot of different variations of this, of course, so you can get a really clean look or you want to get like a contrasty look or a dirty look. So along the process of uh, painting, I, every once in a while I'll say, hey, if, you're, if you just like what you got, stick with it. But if you want more detail or more texture, or more contrast, then keep going. So uh, along with this video is probably three other stages you could probably develop into also. But it gives you the techniques of doing underpaintings and texturing so that when you stack color on top of it, so you can get this type of look right here. So I hope you enjoy the video and have fun with the technique. All right, so to get started, we are first going to have to primer the piece. So anytime you have a 3D printed part, you should primer it. Now I'm at work, uh, I forgot my spray primer. I'm gonna put a link below. It's Krylon, I believe, or Rust-Oleum spray primer. And it's a certain shade for bones, okay? So for bones, I like the Terracotta Red. Okay, so you're gonna, this is the first stage, you're going to spray primer the entire thing. Cool. So that's the first part and you can imagine me painting that on video would be kind of boring. So we're gonna skip to the bigger steps and then I'll show you the detail steps real time. The next step is you're going to go out and buy these. These are war paints, okay? You'll need skeleton bone. You'll need this white, but you can actually get the white from war paint if you wanted to. I just happen to have model color acrylic colors. This is a really good paint, by the way. So you might want to get the white. All right, so the quick shade series, I need soft tone. And then dark tone. All right, with those you could pretty much do just about everything. And if you wanted to get a little bit of creative, sometimes Mild brown works quite well for like getting in there and making it look dirty. So mild brown. I'll set that to the side. Maybe I'll get that. So you're also going to need something like this. And you're going to need some distilled water. I would use distilled water. It's just easier that way. And you're going to to fill maybe one of these with distilled water because that's going to be your wash. Okay, we're going to turn the white into a wash for later, and we're going to do many layers of uh, different textures. So, this technique is kind of like an oil painting technique with acrylic. The idea is first base coat it. Okay, so what I did here is I took the skeleton bone, you take a brush that looks like this, and I would have a couple of these brushes handy, that way you don't have to keep uh, going and then washing out your brush, that's annoying. So you're going to basically dry brush it to look like this. Now if you can look at the texture of this, here let me adjust the camera. You can see it's not perfect, okay? Don't make it perfect. You do not want it perfect. You want to dry brush it so that there's like different layers of things going on here. So just, you know, splash it on and then kind of move it around and it's good to go. And if you miss steps, if you miss like those little cracks and crevices, that's okay. That's perfect. So you do not need to be very good at painting to get this first thing. And you don't have to be good at painting for all the additional steps either. Just make sure the two pieces match in the end. 
if you're doing a multi-part, it should be good. Okay, so the next step is we initiate soft tones. So let me uh, get the camera manually back into... For this, I like to manually focus the camera so I can get the most detail. Nice. All right. So we're going to take and we're going to use soft tone straight out of the bottle. And we're going to take a brush. And what we're going to do here is let it seep into the cracks and crevices. So uh, you can see that just by going like this, it magically goes into all the cracks and crevices. Sweet. So we're first going to initiate that. And if you get a little over, let's say like that, that's okay. We're going to actually, that's perfect because we're going to blend it after it seeps out. So once it starts drying in these cracks, then we can kind of move it around a little bit. But let it dry in the cracks just for a sec. Move on to another part of the model. So basically wherever you see detail, just kind of do one of these numbers. And this is the trick. I like this model. I chose it for a reason. See, it's got a horn that I can grab. <laughs> can just keep going. I feel like Bob Ross of the 3D printing realm. So I'd tell you a cool story about squirrels and trees, but I don't have any really This is what we're doing. And now that it's kind of dry, then you kind of move it around a little bit. It dries very quickly. So make sure that you are moving it around a little bit. And don't let it puddle. See right there, that's a puddle. Just kind of slathering it on, and then every once in a while, I'm just doing one of these and leaving it in that crack. See the crack? So it's an art of subtraction, not an addition. Like you just want to keep it in the areas, and you don't want to brush them out of the details. You can see where it's pooling right there. See that? So you gotta go back to that part, blend that. You see where it's pooling right here. You want to blend that. And you just repeat that with all these soft tones all the way around the model. I'll try to timestamp this video. But I will do a little bit of timestamp and I will do a little bit of hard editing with it. So that way you don't get bored. If I start ranting, I will stop that. This is where you always underestimate how much paint you need. <laughs> All 
All right, you just look for pooling, then blend. Once you get good at this, you can paint a model with probably probably about 30 minutes. That's allowing the paint to dry between things. So you want your base coat to be as contrasty as possible. These are your base layers. Just like uh, oil painting has base layers, so does model painting. It has base layers. The art of contrast, and then we wash those contrasts down. out of the brush. All right, so I'm going to introduce a tool. Uh, let me go get it, and then I'll show you why it's important to have. All right, so this is a silicon mat. I use these a lot for all my hobbies. It's really nice because paint does not stick to it. Super glue doesn't stick to it. Nothing sticks to it. And you can buy them on Amazon. I'll try to put a link below um, for them and you will love them. It's nice to put your painting objects on them and you don't get paint all over your table. Uh, same with graphite paint. And if you are following my electroforming series, that's A thing we have all the time getting everywhere is graphite paint. And if you don't know what electroforming is, I would highly suggest you go check those videos out and introduce yourself to a hobby that is always entertaining. And then you can mix the hobby with this hobby. Maybe we'll try to do that in a future video. All right, so that's what I basically want, and the pooling happens. We just kind of blend. All right, so what the next step is, we're going to skip ahead while this dries, and we're going to do uh, hard tones the very same way. So we're going to use dark tones this time. All right, so another thing that you might want to do, well, first off, we have to go do that to the other piece too. <laughs> so check the timestamps below. Some people like just playing the video and just having it going into the background with my soothing raspy voice. see a divot like that down there see that yeah and guess what else I should buy another sponge thing yeah they come in groups of six and I forgot them all at home except for the one all right there we go 
This is where you should get creative and say, I need a hair dryer too. So I'm not gonna <laughs> run a hair dryer on video, but you can just set this like this and then you can just hair dry it and it'll save you hours, hours of time when it comes down to it. So I'm gonna go get a hair dryer and run that on here so I can go to the next step. So I will say when you're drying it with a hair dryer, this is like a really good opportunity to introduce some texture to it every once in a while. And then, you know, just as it, you can see like these pools, for example, if you want to touch those pools up as you're hair drying it, you can. Um, and that underpainting, again, has, can have as much contrast as you want. Like in this example right here, no, there's no detail in those but you can introduce some like that just by hitting it with a hairdryer. And then you get these like, kind of a crunchy look to it in those areas. And that's good as an underpainting. What you want to try to avoid is water marks. So like there's an example of a water mark. It's where you like had too much liquid in the area. So now you can cover that up with texture, just like that, and boom, you're good to go. All right, so I said I wouldn't do this on camera, but I lied, haha. Uh -huh. All right, what I'm using is a Wagner hair dryer. <laughs> this is not a hair dryer, but it's a, it is, very good at drying paint. Uh, just keep it on real low. And the bad thing about that one is when you go to turn it off, it actually doesn't turn all the way off. It cools down. So the Wagner, I think it's a paint remover or something like that. Paint, a heat gun. Okay, it's basically a heat gun. All right, so we repeat that step again. And this time we use dark tones. So why not do uh, dark tones first and light tones, you ask? It is because we want to be able to see where we want to put these in. Because these are really strong. And again, I would say this we just touch in some areas. We do blend it a little bit. But what we want to do is put these in these cracks and crevices and nooks. Just like that. So just do all the nooks first and then blend with this stage. That'll give it a little bit longer to dry in the nooks. I see a support, a 
Is that a support? No, I guess not. Okay. Look like a support for 3D. When you 3D print it, you get these supports that you got to peel off, and you never get them all. It's like just when you think you got them all, there's like two more that you forgot. So you kind of see where these go. These go in the hard areas. These super divots, that's where this goes. Then every once in a while you might want to take your brush and just dry it out on a piece of paper. And this is the pseudo blend phase. that it doesn't pool on these areas and you just want to take this extra paint and utilize it into the texture on the bigger areas. And every once in a while even these bigger areas you should probably introduce this softly Try to pull out the stuff out of the cracks because it will take forever to dry if you don't. Just a little bit out of the cracks, not all the way. Okay, I pulled too much out of that one. Uh, you can also use your finger if you want, if you want to pull uh, it away from the surface and or another brush that is not contaminated. There's that piece. See a little bit more. I gotta introduce right here. If you use the hairdryer method, you'll notice that the model is warm and it actually makes it a lot easier to speed this along. So a warm model is really easy to paint. So there's no dexterity here, right? I mean, like, it's just the paint, like, soaking in to all the cracks and crevices. It's the modeling that's strong. Okay, so, like, that's the difference between a good 3D model and a bad 3D model, too. It's like, the artist, in this case, I scanned I scan this model and then develop more details in areas knowing that I'm going to either paint it or electroform it, but I will bolster it to say that, you know, like, I've designed these to paint well. I went into uh, ZBrush and I really took a, a lot of time to over-exaggerate uh, some of the nooks and crannies so that it would paint well. And this is the time when I actually uh, support my model and say hey if you want this model and you want to paint it it's on firstdensitymaterial.com it's called a Mount, Mount Jack Deer along with other models mainly skulls 
Uh, for right now, I got some insects coming, so if you want to paint some insects, got those two. And there's a commercial version of the model that you can paint and print as many as you want commercially. It's a little bit more expensive when it comes down to it, but uh, it gives you the rights to be able to do that. All right, so we hit that with a hair dryer again. Uh, make sure that you are adding a little bit of texture every once in a while to it while you're doing it, and then we'll move on to the washing phase. All right, before we go to the washing phase, I would like to say that, you know, it all depends what you're after as far as uh, the look that you want. So, I mean, you could go and say this is pretty good for like found in dirt type of look um, for, a, for a skull. Uh, so just kind of know that the washing phase, one of the things that you should do is wait till the model is completely dry before you do that. So let all these things dry and thing. You can hit it with a hair dryer all you want, but it's never going to be 100% dry. So just let it dry dry, like a couple hours dry, naturally. And if you see anything that needs to be blended, just blend it. You don't want any harsh lines, like there's a harsh line right there. Not really too concerned about it, but if you want to feather that out, you can. Sweet. All right, so I'm going to let this dry for maybe an hour, and then I'll come back. I've already hit it with a hairdryer a little bit too to start to spark it, but then we'll do the washing, and then you can decide whether you want to continue with this because it's the next stage is kind of scary with the washing. You might like this look. All right, so now the washing phase. Uh, so here we have pure pigmented white. Okay, this stuff will cover over everything, so you do not want to use it in its straight up form. And what I like to do Just kind of scoop this over to this side with a brush and make a wash. And how do you know how good the wash is? Well, you find an object that's darker that I forgot. So I'll be right back with a black piece of paper. All right, so here we have a black piece of paper. Use construction paper, whatever you want to use. And so basically you're just testing how strong this stuff is. Does it cover the black or does it just add gray on top of it? So that's what we want. We want the gray. So we already got, oops, dripped on there. So we're taking the wash area and we're just pretty much washing the entire model. And I know you're like, oh no, all the details are gone. We'll get them back in a later phase. What we have to do is kind of cover over the underpainting because the underpainting is just too contrasty at this point. Yeah, in this phase, you gotta be careful where you're grabbing too. So, unfortunately, because of the water, you could accidentally just peel off all the paint. If you find your wash not sufficient enough, um, I would highly suggest just kind of leaving it, to be honest with you, because it. You can add as many layers as you want, and the more layers you add, the better it looks. 
So a really watery, milky type of thing that's not covering it over very well is actually what you want. And then letting that dry and adding another layer. Uh, you'll notice it won't pool up as bad with this stage. And that's the washing stage. Ooh, pretty entertaining, right? This stuff will dry almost clear, and then it will cover over the contrast. Then we'll add the contrast back in only on areas that are really, really important, like teeth area and the horn area. Just like uh, an oil painting or a regular painting, you put the blacks only in the areas that you want people's eyes to go to. Just like in 3D land we do the same thing. We only add contrast to the areas that we want people to look at. Okay, so now I can do this horn. And do this horn. And just basically, you know, kind of take your, take your brush, dry it out on a piece of paper. And then you're just soaking up the puddles. Soak up the puddles. Constantly dry off your brush. Constantly soak up the puddles. And it's really hard to get the under part now because, yeah, I did the horns. All right, there we go. So we let that dry now. And just do it to this piece too. And if you choose to watch that portion, that's up to you. Remember, timestamps are below. Soak it up. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go.
and then just taking a brush and kind of drying it off and pulling the puddles out of the teeth. And you can see that that gets some of the detail back. So that's a way to get the detail back right off the, st the stage. You just pull out the liquid rather than repaint all the details. It's an another way to do it. All right, so let's look at it kind of close. And then you can see it's kind of just got there's an area that needs to be sucked out. Mm -hmm. Just like that. So let's that, let that dry uh, quite a while. Um, this stage does take a little bit significant time to dry. You could try the hairdryer method too, but um, I, I noticed that it's just better just to kind of let it dry at this stage. And we might add one more layer on. I don't know, I, I do like this already this is a really nice blend so we might not mess with it too much it's looking really natural it's got lots of depth to it so we'll add the details back in in the next stage and then we're good to go all right so everything is dry it looks like this now okay it's got that base layer. Now, it all depends how much you want to do. You could do one more base layer. Um, what I might do is another base layer just with a stronger version of white on teeth and stuff like that before I go to the next stage. So you get, you get to see that. So all I'm doing here is I'm making the same wash This time, I'm aimed at making it turn this piece of paper a little bit more gray. I might go two scoops this time, maybe three. This is the hard part of trying to do this on video and saying, hey, it's perfect. And you see, I'm just scooping paint into water. So you can see when I'm making a brush stroke, it's going to white. And it does have a little bit of the gray, but mainly white. Okay, cool. So where this is going to be is it's a kind of a dry brush. So I'm going to be going like this and dry brushing just a little bit and then adding it to the piece. And I would say just a little bit more. Yeah, I want it just a little bit stronger. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Okay. So. so again, this is only on the teeth and anything that's kind of the color of the white that you want to show through. You have to be kind of careful at this stage to only get it in those areas. Can let the detail kind of work. Don't sit here with a brush and try to opaque things. That always looks horrible. Just 
just letting you know. Uh, do not opaque your model. Meaning that you're using the paint at full strength. Let those textures go through. So I'm going to do this on the horns too to kind of show that contrast difference. So basically it looks like that. And every once in a while I'll go back and just kind of, when it dries you can almost get a second layer on right away. Alright, so I'm going to put that off to the side. Work the teeth on the bottom jaw. Just gonna zoom in real quick and kind of adjust my focus at this level. There we go. Got to get that 8K look, right? Yeah. Pretty soon, right? 8K. All proceeds to monetization go to the supply of all cameras and equipment allows me to upgrade the clarity and the viewing experience. So put my channel on play at night. <laughs> just let it autoplay. Of course don't do that, it's just funny. Oops. Okay, so if you made a mistake, this is a dry brush. And what this will do is totally eliminate that mistake. So I should have showed you that before. That's my eraser at this stage. So a big fluffy camel brush is good at this stage if you mess up. Okay, so now I'm just going to take a dry off my brush and try to pull away things in the super cracks. So just soak right up. I'll show you that zoomed in. So I got a lot right here. I'm drying off my brush and watch what happens when I hit the brush. Soaks all the stuff up in the cracks. Here's some more. Here's another view of that. Soaks it right up, then leaves all the stuff behind. Another few. Boom. It's actually almost easier to do this on or the video reel because it's zoomed in. All right, set that to the side. I'll show you this model now. 
can see the teeth. Cool. You can also highlight the model. I guess I could show you that. And just in case you want to go doing that route, because this is a good stage to highlight. So, highlighting is the same mixture. And all I'm doing is touching these edges right here with a little bit more. I don't like putting fake highlights in too much. So I, I say use this sparingly, just uh, use it on the topmost things. And definitely dry brush blend it. You can see how this is too harsh right here. So just dry brush blend it. And it's kind of like dabbling it. Pretend this is where the sun hits it the most. It is like, it's been out of the ground. It's dried up in these areas. Right, perfect. And then, you know, here's a little area that got screwed up. So we're going to use that very same technique to blend this. So you can see right there, right? So this is where you can get creative and use your finger to get that off. <laughs> okay, sweet. So that is the highlight phase for details. You can see the texture now on all the layers, all those colors. And we're just gonna let that dry and then we're gonna pop in uh, the details back in. You're going to need a couple things. And I'll go over what they are at this, that stage. All right, so this next stage you're going to use like a very sable brush. It doesn't matter what you use. I use a 10 0, um, but you can use anything you want, uh, just as long as it's got a real fine tip. Um, I'm using Zems, and they're this right here Zem 2600 liners, 10 zeros. Again, you can use that one, or if you're Unsure about yourself, there's another 10 0, but it's like really fine. 
Okay, so they're, they're different sable. One's a sable, one's an M liner, and one's a liner. Okay, good brushes, really good brushes. You don't need fancy brushes, though, to be honest with you. Just maybe every once in a while you need some help when it comes down to it, but you don't have to go buying super expensive brushes. So I'm using the soft tone and the hard tone again, but this time I'm being a little bit more careful and I'm only putting this in like things I want people to really look at. like that. Okay, then I dry it off and just kind of pull that color down. Okay, do the other side. And it's more about letting the liquid fall in the cracks than it is trying to brush it on. Like that. I know, really thrilling, right? Um, trust me when I say this. Is, is it kind of therapeutic? There's no doubt about it. Just dry it off and then blend. If you get some of the texture or some of the color on the tooth, that's awesome. Okay, in this area, I want to do some of that. This one requires a little bit more. Goop. It's a very noisy area right there. And pretend this is the area, let's say it was rotting in the dirt. You know what I mean? This is the, the bottom side of this is probably going to get a little bit more color, texture. And these horns. The 
the horns is what I really want people to look at so I'm going to definitely kind of over exaggerate some of the, the details on these There we go. So that's how you pull out the details again. And oh, got some little piece right here. And anything that you see this white, so there's like a, a white that it might have happened. Just kind of brush that into those cracks. Light is better. Okay, let's move over to the jaw while that dries. There we go. You see all those details. Holy moly. So you can also add this into these little cracks right here. Blend that out. And some of this white, like this right here, when you go to put your clear coat on, it's going to be, it's going to blend that, so. 
you don't want to wash out too much of your contrast because contrast gets knocked down quite badly in the later stages of clear coating. All right, so I'll let that dry and then we'll move on to the, the harsher ones, which I'm just going to put in the very, 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 very cracks. Uh, just kind of look around, make sure nothing's pooled. And if it is pooled, you take your fluffy camel, just kind of do a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Sweet. Alright, so this is zero, 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 zero steel wool. Four zeros. And all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of lightly, ever so lightly, touching this thing with this. So I'm not pushing at all. All this is doing is blending any weirdness together. Also knocks down some of these uh, gloss points that occur with the drawing of paint. So. Don't get too nuts with this. Again, it's just meant to blend things together. And you can see some of that white that was on there before. It's just definitely disappearing when it comes down to like blending the two together. Cool. So that is uh, the steel wool phase. Doesn't look like it did much, but trust me, if you have it in your hand, and I don't know if I can zoom in on. So you can see how it kind of blended the whites together. Maybe this little area I can show you what it does. Boom. Just like that. All right, so we're gonna let that dry a significant amount of time before we go to the clear coat phase. All right, so for the clear coat, I'm gonna use Rust-Oleum Matte Finish. Okay, this is uh, my go-to way of knocking down all the contrast on the model. And you should always stick to a matte finish when it comes down to it. Don't put gloss, of course. But you see, there's like these little areas that are really glossy. That's kind of hard to see, but let's see if I can zoom in on this area. Okay, so yeah, it's like here kind of glossy in this crack and cracks and crevices are glossy so we need to knock all that down 
and then it's going to blend and unify all this stuff together with the clear coat. Many small coats, I'm not going to do that on screen, I'm just going to do it off camera. Alright, so here's the finished product. So this is with like three coats. And you can kind of see the sheen, see it? Like how it's too uniformed. So at some point, you could say that this is almost too uniformed of a sheen for bone. And you could knock it down with the, the steel wool if you wanted to, just to like make sure that you're getting different variations of sheen even. Um, in there, so that's that's an option that you could take is just you know every once in a while just kind of like go over it after you clear coat it and that will take that sheen off and still use a lot of the clear coat so just make sure you're getting maybe two to three coats of clear coat on it because that way you can take advantage of doing this technique too but other than that you know it does I love the contrast of it um, and there's so many, again, so many different variations that you could take with this technique. You could stop with uh, the, the harsh dark tones if you wanted to and leave those out. And you can see that if you also choose to go the route of, uh, what was the other one? So, not soft tones, but mild brown, you could replace them the dark tone with mild brown and it works out a different way too. There's so many different variations with this technique, it's silly. But this technique also works with any 3D effect, whether it be armor, whether it be whatever. You want to be able to stack your textures in different variations of clear and you'll always get this really nice something to look at type of texture rather than just a uniformed color. So I hope you enjoyed the video um, and that's it. Uh, if I get something else that I want to show, share with you as far as painting is concerned, it's a nice change of pace to be able to show you other things that I can do other than electroform and 3D print stuff. So there you go. Have a good one.